You know, and the other thing, too, is that I'm arguing always this free will with people that have strong wills. It drives me nuts. You guys get yourself up in the morning. You know, you choose. You end up in beautiful, idyllic places or you start businesses. You know, all these things that take will. But even just the regular getting up in the morning. And meanwhile, there's people on the street that don't, that, that haven't got their will together. And you're just, it just seems incredibly insulting, this idea that, um, no, it has nothing to do they, with, with, with their will. They couldn't get that together. They, it's just something happening to them. Being in the street is just happening to them. Me with my garden and beautiful wood beams, it's just happening to us. It's just, and not only is it all luck, and you either end up where I am or you don't, but don't even try to change it. There's nothing you can do to accomplish any change. It just happens or it doesn't. You either have the idea or you don't. There's nothing you can do to try to get a hold of the idea to maybe visualize, you know. There's nothing you can do to start painting a painting. Either just a painting comes out or it doesn't. It's, it's annoying. It's what's, to me, it's what's wrong with this society, this weird strong-willed people using their will to argue there is no will for some, like, what... What, what, why aren't we teaching, what, why aren't we all on the same page here that we need people to think and exercise their thoughts on their will? What do you not get about that this is like some, something from Scientology or something programmed into your brain to make you collapse when you try to improve the world? There is no improvement. It's just happening. You know, the most ironic version of the best of all possible worlds, because there's only one possible world. And you don't think people can affect their situation? It's annoying. It's insulting uh, to the world. You're using your will to accomplish things but you're also using your will to create a, an esoteric denial that that matters, right? Yeah, well, of course I act like there's a will. It's a very persistent illusion. I really just wish that you guys would, would share what you do when you're struggling with decisions, because you do struggle with decisions. You experience the phenomena. I, I consider it incredibly anti-empirical, all you people, that could face the evidence of your will every day and go, no, that phenomena, it, it is a phenomena. You can explain it, and in the end, the explanation might say, well, it was, here's the illusion aspect. I know that'll be the case. There's tons of illusions. And, but with this free and unfree thing, it, you know, another way of putting it is, you know, people are like, they're at the edge of the river and they could choose to cross or they could choose not to cross and it's as if they're saying they could choose to be on the other side of the river no you can't choose to be you are where you are you can't choose anything in that way choosing doesn't really make sense when you think about the details in this question because what you quote unquote choose is to start moving start swimming in that direction you might not make it anyway right and when you get there you can't say oh I just chose to be here no you already were there by then so you're choosing to move your body, and oh, but you're not choosing that either. You're choosing to visualize something, visualize the cool, refreshingness of the water. And are, are you choosing that? No. Somewhere down this line, somewhere in the nerves, a signal is coming through, and we're trying to figure out what, where is this power, and who, where's it really come from? Yeah, when we explain all that, it's going to not look like there's an individual Piro that's gets credit for that power. Why? Because I'm billions and trillions of cells and phenomena. By the time you find this power and why it's coursing through me, it's not going to look like mine anymore because I'm not an actual thing anyway. I'm a whole bunch of things. But it's somewhere in this network. It belongs to the network is the, 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 the next reductionist assumption. It somehow is in this network. It belongs. It's a feature of this network. And just to deny that, while well, you're some of the more strong-willed people in the world, how am I supposed to count that as honest? You know, my willingness to say, hey, everybody can have their own opinion, is butting up against just honesty. How can I consider you guys as being honest? You're not, you make decisions, you don't want to report how you make them. If you did, it would be counter to your philosophical argument Therefore, I know that you are living 
with decisions and ideas that require abstraction and thought and philosophy when you're making decisions every moment or every day. And if you shared how you make them, it would be counter to your public philosophy. So how am I supposed to not say that? That's a hypocrisy right there and a dishonesty. And a, again, I don't know the exact nature of that dishonesty, but I know that it's not adding up. It's because of how you think of these words like free and choice and stuff. I'm going to choose to have a candy bar. No. I'm going to visualize having a candy bar, and if that propagates and that visualization continues and the subsequent visualizations and I end up in the store with the money, buying the candy bar, you know, I'm choosing a course. Like I said, you can't choose results. You choose a path. You choose the next step from where you are with your body and because the body is this neural network we know that those choices are distributed within this system and no one thing is really making that choice to move your body there's millions of little you know computations and processes going on that emerge in that behavior we need to ask the question from this core of what we're really doing, that where we are in this moment in the little tiny, tiny segment of, of what can happen next and how navigation plays a role. You know, the most of the power in a river is in the power. You're paddling your canoe is insignificant to the amount of energy in that river, but you could still use it to navigate the river. But we don't want to answer that question. We don't want to talk about how, you know, the data we ought to be collecting, all of you anti-free will people, if honestly, is you should be the ones telling us how you experience subjectively the making of a decision and get the raw data out there and let us see why it looks like an illusion to you or if it really does or if you've just decided as I think that it ought to look like an illusion and you're going to jump before it really looks like an illusion and, and pretend that you see what's coming so you pretend you're already there. No, 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 no. You can't just choose to have that result. You need to find the path there. You're not at that place. You don't live like there's no will. You're not being honest with where you really are, where you really live. There's an unspoken philosophy of action and decision making. Right? And that means you're undermining an ethics and a morality and really anything that you're saying. So... Yeah, could you do something about that?